Recently, a friend of mine phoned me and asked me for some car advice. What did I think of the Land Rover Discovery 4? He said, not a bad choice. Are you planning to do a lot of hardcore off-roading? His reply was no. I then suggested to him that maybe he should rather not spend his money on a whole bunch of off-road equipment that he's never going to use and should perhaps look at a more traditional SUV, the BMW X5 or an Audi Q7. Strangely though, the Mercedes-Benz M-Class didn't even pop into my head, not because it's a bad car or that I don't like it, but because over the last little while it's simply faded into the background. Over the last decade or so, even the previously feared ML63 has been eclipsed under the hype of BMW's X5M and the almighty V12 diesel Audi Q7. But the new ML class is here, and by the looks of it, it's looking to stake a serious claim. It is a totally different car. The only recognizable carryover from the old model is the grille. But otherwise, it's sleeker, it's leaner, and it's prettier. And it's especially nice with the optional LED lights. I think that's part of the reason the old one slipped off my list of recommendations. It was a bit nondescript on account of the fact that it was frumpy, where its competition was more athletic and imposing. This new car changes all of that, and even manages to be a little menacing from some angles. It's cut back on the flab in favour of strong lines, neat elements that fit together perfectly, and a look that, despite its physical size, looks more compact than other SUVs. It makes an instant impression, this car. It drew more than a few admirers in the time that I had it. And that's why you're standing still. Once you get going, the engine in this ML250 Bluetech makes things even more impressive. It's as smooth a diesel and as refined a diesel as you'd expect from Mercedes-Benz, but if you hadn't read the spec sheet, you'd never believe that it's a small four-cylinder. Yep, this entry-level M makes do with a 2.1-litre turbo, which puts out a respectable 150 kilowatts and an unbelievable 500 newton meters. Fuel efficiency figures from Mercedes-Benz claim a 6 litre per 100 kilometre consumption rate, which means the standard 93 litre tank will get you from Joburg to Cape Town without the need to refuel. That's thanks in part to the standard start-stop technology, which is fast becoming a favourite amongst manufacturers, although they're not all getting it right. Most people's first impression of start-stop technology is that it is annoying, but you do soon get used to it. Except in the ML, because it is annoying. It's just a little bit too sensitive, a little bit too eager, and it needs, I don't know, it needs an explanation. All systems work the same way. Pull up to a stop, foot on the brake, the engine cuts. Foot off the brake, the engine starts, off you go. In start-stop traffic, for example, most cars give you a few seconds between the start and the stop, meaning you can move small distances with the cars around you without having the engine cut out and then start every time. Not with the M-Class. It cuts and then starts without hesitation, which may be more efficient, but it's also more annoying. Yes, you can switch it off, but then you lose out on the fuel-saving point of its existence. There is one other minor irritation, and that's the seven-speed auto gearbox, which tends to be a little bit slow on the uptake when you really want to get going. But besides that, this car with its air suspension and its all-wheel drive and its selectable drive modes and the steering gives the ML more car-like reactions than you might expect. And if you are one of the rare breed who actually takes their SUV off-road, it can handle a bit of the rough stuff. Standard, it's fitted with helpful things like hill start and hill descent control and an off-road mode for the traction control. If you're really serious about taking your Mercedes-Benz across Africa, you can pay in an extra 23 grand above the 683,000 rand for this 250 and get an off-road package complete with low-range transfer case, underfloor protection and diff locks. This interior is designed to handle the rigours of the Joburg commute rather than an off-road exhibition. In some ways it is a little bit dull, a little bit old-school Mercedes-Benz, especially when considered to the interior of, say, the new B-Class. But even in this entry-level ML, it is comfortable. Finished in typically restrained Mercedes-Benz fashion, it manages to provide just the right level of luxury, even though it's not the most exciting place to sit. The standard list of kit is decent, and the options include everything from keyless entry to rear entertainment screens to temperature-controlled cup holders. Space is SUV-like, with a flexible load area that can accommodate up to 2,000 litres. Of what, it doesn't say, but it is a substantial figure.
SUVs like the M-Class are designed to mix city life with the great outdoors. And while the ML250 has the potential to be a conquering all-terrainer, Mercedes-Benz have instead concentrated on what matters most in the real world. They've designed a stylish, good-looking car that delivers a good everyday drive. It makes do with a small 2-litre motor, but with up to 500 newton meters on tap, it shifts the M-Class with no trouble at all. The ML is better styled and more comfortable, making for an enjoyable everyday drive. It's only spoiled by an over-enthusiastic start-stop system.